Lightspeed Rescue. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were the pinnacle of Saturday morning entertainment for kids all around the world. And it stayed that way for a long time. The merchandise created was a gold mine and showed almost no sign of stopping. But one fateful year, we had a complete cast makeover, and it was all downhill from there. Well, it was for my generation anyway. Me and my friends, we couldn't get into the new ones. Then again, we were growing up and moving on to all sorts of different stuff, so who knows? Well, in the years to follow, a new Power Rangers brand was coming up every time he turned around. So, obviously, nothing was working too well. The flavor of the month that happened to land a game on the Nintendo 64 was Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. The theme was essentially that they were rescue rangers working as firefighters, EMTs, and police officers. Rescuing the citizens when needed, and rescuing the entire city the next. So we have all the different elements here to put together a brand new game. That means we should do it, said every cash-grabbing company ever. So without further ado, here's Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue for the Nintendo 64. I'm keeping my phone on standby just in case I have to call for rescue myself. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. Thank you. Yeah, it's that bad. The graphics, the sound, the music, the tacos, the everything. If you seek redemption for this game, there's none to be found. You're just kind of dropped into this gigantic map. They're big, they're empty, and they make me miss the fields of Quest 64. At least they were pretty to look at. These cities are just dull and all sorts of cookie cutter generic. Whatever, let's get walking. Hey Ranger, you can clean up the mess by pressing the A button. At this time, I would like to apologize to all those who developed Quest 64. I thought you may have had one of the worst walking animations I'd ever laid eyes upon. But clearly that was not the case. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new title holder for the world's worst walking animation. We salute you. For serious, though, what were they thinking making this okay? Looking at all the games that came out on the Nintendo 64 and saying that this walk animation is okay. Just no. No. So, in order to move on, we have to eradicate all the slime enemies on this map. And to do it, we have to use our special sparkle powers. So, in order to move on, we have to eradicate all the slime enemies on this map. And to do it, we have to use our special sparkle powers. Okay. I was just making sure that sentence came out of my mouth. <sighs> There we go. That's the last of them. Yay! I, I'm sorry, what? Yay! And the crowd goes mild. Even the citizens of the city are completely aware that all you did was throw sparkles at slime to make them go away. And they're there to let you know that what you did was completely underwhelming. Every other level puts you behind the wheel of a rescue vehicle, and they're all the same. Sometimes you're in a fire truck shooting laser beams to put out fires, and sometimes you're in an ambulance shooting hula hoops and ramming citizens to save them. There is a silver lining to these sections, though. It's entertaining as hell to ram the cars and watch them fly. Okay, just what the hell is this? It looks like some sort of little fly dropping bombs on me. It's nearly impossible to get hit though as long as I keep moving. Although it is kind of unfair that I can't return fire and shoot it down. Yay! Now it's time to enter the Megazord. It has to be a fun part, right? It's the Megazord! Then again, it's not the Megazord I grew up with. This ain't gonna be fun. 
As usual, I've spoken way too soon, and we've been thrown into a terrible first-person fighting mode. Just shooting missiles and activating weird powers that don't seem to do anything. I've never watched this Lightspeed show, but one thing that always was great was watching the Megazords duke it out with giant monsters until it eventually falls to the Great Power Sword and the enemy will crash to the ground as it explodes into a million pieces. In this game, you just shoot it with missiles and sometimes awkwardly punch it until it just kind of falls down. I mean, come on, guys. The Nintendo 64 was not that limited. Then again, the budget for this game probably was. One thing I've noticed far too easily is that there are no level-specific soundtracks, and it seems to just change randomly. It's like somewhere there's a child with a bag of quarters just hanging out next to the jukebox changing the song every two seconds. I think the most annoying part of it is that the music isn't even really good. They're all just a bunch of sound loops. Three. Okay, so now I have to find a meteor in the subway station while being chased by some weird demons. So where is this stupid meteor? I've looked everywhere. And what's the deal with these civilians? They want help, but they're just standing there. You know, a good way to get away from something is to run away. If you just stand there screaming for help, you're not doing anything to help yourself. These guys are more helpless than the Jinjos from Banjo-Kazooie. Finally, here's the frickin' meteor. Yeah! Oh, come on, guys. I just saved like 10 people and found the meteor that's about to destroy the world. I deserve a little more enthusiasm than that. You fucking ingrates. And here's another stupid vehicle scene. This time, we're running over citizens on the sidewalk. These people are clearly not in any danger. They're simply standing there while other people are driving. They seem pretty safe. You know, a Power Rangers game should be a beat-em-up. I don't care what the theme of the current generation of Power Rangers are. If it gets a video game, it should be a beat-em-up. I don't know what this is! Great, another giant city. These enemies just keep respawning. It's not helping me find out where I need to go. In fact, they're the only thing I can find. You know what? I don't even know what I'm looking for. I wonder how long I can make this go on. So finally, after finding every last civilian, I come across my first on-foot boss, the genie. Excuse me? Really? The Green Ranger is just standing there? Even after he's been rescued, he needs to abide by the buddy system? How did he even get picked for this job? You know, it, it looks like anyone can be a Power Ranger nowadays. This is my dream come true. ZILLA POWER! Okay, overall this game just isn't good at all. It's obnoxiously slow paced and repetitive. Every mission involves you saving all the civilians in a given area before you can accomplish your main goal. The controls are overly simplistic, only using the A and B buttons, and the compulsive need for the computer to shout your power up at you 
every time you get one, as if it needs to tell you you're invisible while you're actually invisible. Invisibility! <laughs> Oh well, at least they don't put you to sleep with one, which is more than I can say for the actual game itself. Like I said, I never watched Beyond the Mighty Morphin series, but I'm sure the Lightspeed fans were just as underwhelmed by this piece of shit, if not more, than I was. Well, that's about gonna have to wrap things up for this week in Retro Nightmares. Make sure you join us next week. Who knows what we're gonna review? Oh, no.